Hey, this is Max. I'm back with another CSR2 video. This time it is Tempest 1 Tier 1 with the Mazda Miata. This is the 300 PP bracket. When I started this bracket, I had about five Fusions installed. At the end of the 300 bracket, uh, you were rewarded actually about uh, six, seven Fusions, not all of which will be useful at the time. Uh, but some are dupes, others are just not useful. However, I have now a total of 10 fusions installed on the car. So without the extra five fusions being installed, just kind of going in with the original fusions that I had installed on the car, utilizing the same tune I show in my initial video with the Max Evo setups, I basically set up to 300 PP with stage five engine, four trans, three tire, and five nitrous. Ignoring the fact that I don't have any fusions at the time in the engine, I have since picked up one common, and I also picked up an, another uh, nitrous common, I mean, I'm sorry, uncommon, which added quite a few EVO points. The nitrous itself was almost 44 EVO. That's a big jump. Before these were added, the car was dynoing and running at about 13.73. And that is just enough to get you through to about event 19, uh, race 19, which incidentally is still running in the 13.7 range. However, once you get to uh, the 20th race, it jumps down to a 13.66 uh, for Rico. So that is one of the first spots you can get stuck at because, quite frankly, if you don't have any fusions for nitrous gained, and if you're just getting fusions for parts that are actually not installed yet, like body, I did get managed to get some more body parts. That's not going to be very helpful to you. So I have intake fusion I gained. I got a turbo and a, and a blue turbo, but the problem with resetting for turbo is you're giving up almost all the engine for the turbo. So it, it becomes a balancing act of can you get it done? So knowing that Rico runs 13.6, I'm here looking at a 13632 for my theoretical time, and he runs a 13667. The tune changes as well. If you look before with the 285, we were tuning here, basically trying to get the best tune out of the car with third gear, uh, which is still possible to get a decent tune. But once you add enough upgrades, the best tune becomes fourth gear. So fourth gear is where you're going to be able to hit a much higher number. And every point counts when it comes to these EVO points. You want to get as much as you can so you can get the best time possible. So 13641 here, it should really be better than that. And 3-3, three, three, we're almost there. Maybe 6-8 will do it. Six, seven, yep, there it is. So tire doesn't really change, 65. Nitrous has gotten better. It was at 3.7 before with a lower uh, horsepower rating. Now you can put it to 4.0 at the same, if, if not higher horsepower rating. So nitrous is working a little more too. 13.362. So it's going to be a tough one to beat Rico. It's going to be tight and you're going to be facing... Uh, one of those situations where you can't screw up your shifts or your launch. And with this car, it gets pretty finicky when it comes to this stuff. You have to launch it perfect, which means releasing on time. And then you don't want perfect shifts. You kind of want good shifts for the first two. And nitrous right around 5,000 for the next gear and let it ride all the way out through fourth. This is the way to get the best possible time out of it. If you get it perfectly right, you should run right about dyno, if not uh, slightly under it, if you do it just right. It's very hard to get under, though. Most people will get uh, probably 300 or so or 500 over dyno rather than under. So making it very tough to beat Rico's time. That time I did not do it. 13.742 on a 13.632. So definitely use nitrous a little bit late there in third gear. I'm going to try to use it at 4.8 this time and hope that... I can now eke out the time that I need to get. So again, it may take two or three times before you actually beat Rico. And that is with basically minimal fusions installed. Now, if you have another nitrous, well, not another nitrous, but if you had like an engine 
uh, extra engine fusion or you have a transmission fusion that you can get in there, this will actually become a relatively easy challenge. But when you don't have those installed, you could be stuck already at 310, I mean at 300 PP point, which isn't supposed to be a tough challenge yet. Things going to get much harder from here. So without extra fusions getting into this, you're already facing a pretty tough situation. Now I'm improving, but I haven't quite beaten Rico yet. And that is not a good thing. I did manage to beat him, of course, um, because I'm already racing in the 310 uh, PP points. So I'm going to try one more time, see if I can somehow get it right and just get that number I needed like I did when I faced them. So again, it's a tricky drive when you're trying to get just right to get through beating Rico. And you might end up doing this four or five times before you actually get it. So your margin of error is pretty tight. You have about three hundredths of a second that you can drive slower by in order to win against him. What else could happen? Well, something else that could really help is if you got a trans uh, fusion or you got a tire fusion, both of which will give you some extra points. I'm getting very close, but I haven't quite beaten them yet. And this is a kind of frustration you'll be dealing with when you're actually racing in the 300 bracket. Is there another way to tune it? Well, there's another way to potentially set it up to try to beat this. Um, and most of that comes to trying to maximize the fusions you do have and try to get them all involved in the um, particular setup. And that involves resetting the car in a way that maximizes the fusions you have. So I know I have a fusion in third stage here and one here. So I'm going to try to put both to third stage. And now I can try to throw in something else like some extra intake, which have a fusion in stage three as well. With all this added in, I now can throw a body in. Now it's 297 at 245. So is that going to give me a better time than the 1363 that I saw earlier. Maybe we have three fusions involved. Let's see what it says outright. 16, two, uh, 13362 without fine tuning. But fine tuning isn't necessarily going to get you a huge jump. And it looks like 13618 is the best you're going to get. However, that is slightly better than the 13632. And maybe enough to get me through. So I'm going to try this one more time. So this is where playing with the setting comes into play. You have to look at where your fusions are installed and try to use certain parts that has the fusion in it to see if it'll help you. And here we go. Hopefully this is the right shifting pattern. It's always a little bit of a judgment call when to shift exactly. On some devices, it's easier. On other devices, it's harder. But if you can see a substantial improvement, you're likely to make it through. And there it is. That will beat Rico. And that moves you to the 310 PP level challenges. And if you notice, this is done at 297. But I was leveraging every single fusion I had installed uh, during the time that I made it through the last 10 races. And that's really what natural motion is trying to make you do. It, they're forcing you to learn how to adjust a car and a tune to try to beat based on what you have. Notice I put one stage of body in when I normally would not, simply because I'm trying to leverage these parts, these fusion parts, which gives you that little extra f evil points. And each one of these add a certain level of points. The problem is when you try to go to something like a stage four, you can sometimes have a hard time getting back to under the required numbers. So this is an alternative way as well. That one might actually be easier since I'm levering, leveraging the uh, extra fusion from turbo. I got it. Now I got two of these greens in play and that puts me at probably a slightly faster. So again, 
you may not get the same fusions I did. And that's the problem. Everybody gets different fusions. It's kind of random. You also may get duplicates, which really, really hurts. Um, and that's nothing you can do either. If you end up in a situation where you have nothing but duplicates, no extra fusions to install, and no way to tune around it, you might actually be stuck. And unfortunately, in that case, you may have to simply wait until such a time the game decides to give you another Mazda Fusion of some sort. Should it use strip those T4 Mazdas you got um, from uh, just, you know, the uh, milestone or just because you got lucky? My answer to that is never. Never strip a five-star car to try to make it through a Tempest 1 challenge. It is simply not a smart thing to do, and it certainly doesn't pay. And here you have the T5, I mean T4, five-star Mazda. Definitely don't strip this car for the purpose of trying to get through Tempest. Just wait and pull keys over time. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee that you'll get a Mazda Fusion if you pull bronze keys. Certainly, I wouldn't recommend you to start pulling bronze keys non-stop. That is also a waste of your keys. I would simply wait and hope that something good comes along and not be a total waste of a pole. Now, that, that was actually a pretty decent uh, key pole for a free uh, crate. So again, you may get stuck. Um, you may have to wait for a fusion. And if you're like me and been playing and saving up Mazda fusions anyway, you may have some extra fusions sitting in inventory that can come into play. You just have to kind of play with it and see what happens. Well, that is the 300 bracket. And that was completed at 297 and certainly can be completed at 298 PP rather than 300. So that's another final lesson that you don't always have to hit the number. You just have to hit the actual challenge time rather than worrying about the PP number. Any number underneath 300 you can set the car up to. As long as it meets the target numbers, that is good enough. Well, this is part two of... Um, probably a five-part series. I am now struggling through 310. I can tell you up front, I'm having a lot of problems there. And you will see that when I get to the next video, I'll explain to you where I really got stuck and in fact had to dig into my inventory to get me through. And it doesn't look like it's gonna get any better as you go further down. So without a large amount of fusions, this is definitely not going to be a very easy challenge, no matter how well you tune or how you set up the car. Well, I hope this video has given you some information that is not available in my first video. Certainly, things look so easy in the first video, it may not be so easy as I've shown you in this video. So I implore you to kind of be patient and try different things tweak the settings, leverage your fusions, and hopefully that'll get you through each bracket and also at the same time teach you a lot about tuning and setting up a car for other challenges coming up down the line for the other tiers. I thank you for watching. Uh, as always, feel free to comment and ask questions regarding the information I posted. If you liked the video, please leave a like and please subscribe to the channel so that each time I post a new video, you will be notified so you can check it out and follow what is going on. Thank you, as always, and I'll see you next time.